I welcome one and all to endurance training Numero Uno, courtesy of the coach they call Lamarack. Now I've just completed a progressive warm up and right now it's got me doing some single leg drills. I've never done these. And boy oh boy do they emphasize the mind muscle connection. Certainly if you want to have a nice circular pedaling stroke. Coming up, got a switch over. Practice the clipping in skills here. Here we go, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Not exactly slick. Lost the tension on the trainer. The main body of the training, do you meet? Reduce the gears. The main body of the training comprises 30 minutes. Two minutes at 75% of FTP, 220 watts. And then one minute at 135% of FTP, 395 volts. Focus on tempo endurance, but also keeping the top end power nice and topped up and maintaining my interest. So it's gonna be a tough one. Just gonna get these single leg drills out of the way and then I'll report back as we hit the main body of the train. Only three seconds away from the start of the first interval within a 30 minute block. And we're starting with a bang. It's 60 seconds at 395. Let's see if I can manage that. Erg mode is not engaged. You certainly got my undivided attention now. Whew. It's going to be a long day at the office. The thing is, with Ed as a coach, I always want to do my very best. Raise the bar, deliver the homework on time and to the best of my ability. Because of who he is. Elite athlete, subject matter expert, all round approachable nice guy, but a friend, a very supportive friend. And through my love of cycling and training with Ed, I found my way down to the West Country. Exmo, Minehead, Comhunt TV country, where Scott and Nat could not have made Jane and I feel any more welcome. And for cycling and friendship, for the first time in a long time, I have fun. Actual fun. And age 46, fun is something very special indeed. It's easy to lose sight of it. Here we go. Trainer difficulty is 100%. One thirty five up here. Hear me. So all the gear and the bikes, they're all nice. But it's not what that matters most. It's what we do with it and how we encourage each other that actually counts. It's how 
we take pleasure in each other's success and encourage small steps forward in our unique training objectives. For me, that is what differentiates cycling from so many other aspects of modern life. powerful, stronger and faster, or build endurance and stamina for great rides, sportives, portaries, or racing, or taking part in racing, or watching racing. I couldn't have found a more supportive community if I tried. It's very special indeed. It's where friendships for life are forged. And as I say, we take pleasure in each other's progress. And it's something that I personally have only ever found previously at school, university, and through the territorial army, where I have a very tight-knit group of friends from that. So it's something to celebrate. Friendship through cycling, adventure through cycling. Very special. Well, it doesn't quite feel that way ahead of the fifth into them. I enjoy it really. So thank you for your support, your feedback, your constructive criticism, and insight, and all the banter. We're gonna nurture it and see where cycling takes us. This is all kinds of emotional. It's doable, but horrendous. And it'll have rack speciality. Last 400. is hell. Heart rate's coming down, okay, though. As ever, the training was fasted on the amino acids and cold coffee post-workout nutrition in just a moment. And there we have it. Endurance, number one, on a time budget because of work pressures this week. 
Nice one here. So, Ultimate Greens is on the deck. Nice scoop coming in here. And we're going to do a full gas greens. Full gas is appropriate. There we go. In she goes. Look at that. Minty freshness. One second. Now, full gas is appropriate because that little 30 minute effort from Ed was definitely a wolf in sheep's clothing. Basically, average power over the 30 minutes, 282 watts, normalized 313 watts. And that's a hell of a lot for a little lad like myself. Anyway, Rui, really, keeping the imaginary sponsors happy, full gas greens from Phil Rich's performance. Here we go. Yeah, that's a bad one. That wasn't bad at all. Pleased with that. Look at that. Well, this morning on Bike Racing Without Mercy, I'm going to answer a question that literally nobody in the cycling world is asking themselves. And that is, courtesy of the English National Lockdown and not being able to go to the gym for one month, how much strength do you lose on the incline bench press over the course of four weeks? Now, just prior to the lockdown, I managed eight reps with 50 kilograms on the bar. That eighth rep was galatian, it was super, super slow. I've got 50 kilograms on the bar right now in total, so let's see how I go. fifth rep that was certainly touch and go and I know I know folk don't really love the strength work but I am a firm advocate but I certainly believe it contributes um, certainly to the core stability and some of the strength on the bike and my persistence does know no bounds well on my recent review of the video a few people very kindly commented to say Phil really impressed with your ability to get up and out the saddle and mash a big gear on Swain's Lane. And how did you manage to kind of produce that power out of the saddle for so long? The answer to that is, well, I practiced a lot over the course of the late summer and early autumn under Coach Lavarack. And definitely, practice makes perfect. But additionally, I think a contributing factor certainly has been my focus on the deadlift. Deadlift for what? And certainly deadlift for strength through the core, the glutes, the hamstring, and the quads. So back in a gym, Time to kind of fire up the deadlift again, here with 70 kilograms on the bar. And certainly for me, when combining strength work on the lower body with cycling, as always, the emphasis is on nice form, straight back, extend through the hips and the glutes, knees out over the toes, powerful movement, nice speed of the bar, stopping well short of failure. So you see there, I cut the set short at five reps, because on that fifth rep, the bar, see, the bar speed slowed. And definitely, you'll see also, 70 kilograms, I only weigh 64, but that would be considered very light weights. Um, certainly in the strength training community. Indeed, a little meme would probably pop out right about now saying, Phil, do you even lift? Well, the gym work's complete, and now it's time to undertake a little test, an anaerobic test for Coach Lavarack. And it comprises 60 minutes at 220 watts, i.e. 75% of my FTP. Now, Coach Lavarack says 
that the benefit of this is that it's a test that's at relatively low intensity, which means he can kind of chuck it into the program relatively frequently without it interfering with the quality of the rest of the training. And over time, he's gonna build up the duration of the test, i.e. one and a half hours, two hours, three hours, four hours, that kind of thing. And over more time, he's gonna build up the intensity all the way to 90% of FTP, duration TBA. And I guess this is gonna give him the data that he needs to assess exactly where to set the initial phase of my base training in terms of duration of efforts, intensity of efforts, that kind of thing. So looking forward to doing it, should be nice and doable, and it's been specifically prescribed to ride it on undulating terrain. So I'm going with the Watopia hilly route, you can quite see that there. ERG is not engaged. I'm on rolling terrain, obviously the hilly route, and I'm finding that actually I need just two gears to maintain this 220 watts or so. And you can see it's been pretty successful. The emphasis has been breathing in hard, expelling the CO2 to keep the heart rate down. So I'm gonna stop talking, but learning actually quite a lot from this. Well, the aerobic test is complete. Average 222 watts, so right in the pickle barrel head. Um, more of that in a second. Just also wanted to say a big thank you to Ian Carson. You may remember Ian joined me for the one hour FTP. And very kindly, well Ian understands that I do love a little bit of blue and yellow. Goes beautifully with a certain object. Um, Ian very kindly sent me this beautiful neck scarf, necktie, cravat. Not quite sure what the proper cycling term is, but I love it. Um, from his Ard Cycling Club. So definitely Ian, gonna get that out on the bike, um, out in the wild where it belongs. Thank you very much, sir. Anyway, turning back to the training. So in his aerobic training at relatively low intensity, I reckon Ed's gonna take a good long look at how my heart rate transitioned over the course of the hour. So I was working super hard to expel all the CO2 and inhale the oxygen. I was able to kind of keep the heart rate um, you know, three to five BPM lower by really focusing on the breathing. And so you'll see on the screen that basically heart rate transitioned from about 145 to a peak of 155, and I kind of had it down at the kind of 152, 153 towards the end of the training. So in the vlog next week, I'll let you know what Ed does with the data in terms of setting up the training program. Anyway, more to come. As ever, if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, I'd be super grateful if you would. And in the meantime, whoever you are and whatever you do, please remember to live, thrive and stay healthy.